Number three from the 2006 Higher Maths paper one, functions of functions, a five mark question. I had a quite easy one here. What have we got to do for the first bit? Find f of g of x, where f is this function, which says whatever you put in, you double it and add three, and g is this function. Very similarly, whatever you put in, you double it, but take away three. And remember, of course, the x's are just examples of what goes in. When it says f equals, x is just an example, it could be anything there. It takes this thing, you could even just replicate it with that empty bracket, and add 3. There's a little placeholder for whatever you're putting in. Put in an x, that'll be 2x plus 3. Whoops, why messy. Put in an a, that'll be 2a plus 3. Put in an expression, put in an a plus 1, it'll be an a plus 1 plus 3. So here, the first mark is simply for saying, well, if I put in a g of x, and g of x is this thing, I'll get the function acting on 2x minus 3, and that's your first mark. And for the second mark, all you have to do is just copy what it says it does. What does f do? Whatever you feed it, it'll double it. So if I give it this thing, it'll double it, and then add 3. And what was that thing? That was 2x minus 3. And as far as the marking scheme is concerned, that's sufficient for the second mark and the final answer for that part of part A. But no doubt you hopefully wouldn't be satisfied with that, and you would then say, well, that's 4x minus 6 plus a 3, so 4x minus 3. No marks for that, but you may require that later. And similarly, the second part is, well, what's the other one? What's it g of f of x? Well, that'll be the same, except you're not going to get the same two marks again. There's only three marks for part A. Well, g of f of x will be g acting on f of x is 2x plus 3. So if g is going to act on f of x, it's going to act on 2x plus 3. And what does g do? It doubles it. Whatever you put in, it doubles it and takes away 3. So it'll double it and take away 3. And what's it going to double? This thing. 2x plus 3. And that's the third mark for part A. But again, hopefully you can't resist tidying that up. That's 4x plus 6, take away 3, so that's 4x plus 3. Mentioning again that according to the marking scheme, not later in life anywhere, but just for this exam, according to the marking scheme, there's no marks for actually tidying up the expression. Now part B says, what's the least possible value of the product of those two results? Ah, well, here's where our tidying up is going to pay off. Multiplying the two together means I've got 4x minus 3 times 4x plus 3, which you could multiply out, if you like, tediously, the 4x times both of them, and then negative 3 times both of them. Well, hopefully you'd recognise you've got the difference of two squares. So the result of that must be 4x all squared minus 3 all squared. The answer to that must be 16x squared minus 9. Now that's just one mark. And the second part, what's the least value of that expression? Now the final mark, the fifth mark for this question, is simply for saying what the minimum value is without any justification. The marking scheme specifically says, ignore all justifications, whether they make sense or not. But of course, what you would do later in real life is explain why. Now, the minimum value of that must be negative 9. The reason being, since 16x squared has to be greater than or equal to 0 for all x, little symbol that stands for for all, a handy little one. Since that's got to be greater than or equal to zero, its minimum value is zero, so the minimum value overall will be the zero minus nine. So that means I can say the minimum value will be the zero minus nine, which means the minimum value is negative nine. But again, as far as the marking scheme is concerned, it's just this statement. It's just this negative nine, just saying it's negative nine. Maybe because it just caught your eye. Negative 9 is your fifth mark. <laughs>